So oftentimes when we think about decision making during the labor induction process, we think about maternal preferences. We think of the mom who wants to deliver naturally, so with minimal use of medication or no epidural. Or we may think of the role that a health care provider takes in the decision making process. So let's say we have a woman who's been laboring for 24 hours and starts to have non-reassuring fetal stats. So in a case like that, it may be most clinically relevant to have an emergency C-section. But one thing that's not thought about frequently is the role that one's health insurance might play in the decision making process. So that's what inspired me to write my thesis on the relationship between health insurance type and likelihood of having a labor induction. And then I wanted to explore how that relationship changed in regards to the economic recession. So before we start, uh, just very briefly, a labor induction essentially is the process of artificially starting contractions in the uterus so that a woman who's not otherwise laboring can deliver vaginally. So, how did I study this? I looked at hospital discharge data from Women and Infants Hospital, and I had roughly 36,000 deliveries in my data set. And of those 36,000 deliveries, about 44% were Medicaid recipients and 20% were labor inductions. So in order to assess the relationship between health insurance type and labor induction, I first conducted chi-square analyses for each year of interest. And what I found was that in 2009, there was a significantly greater proportion of Medicaid recipients being induced compared to non-Medicaid recipients. And I also created multivariable logistic regressions. I made a couple of them, so I'll, I'll run through them all. The first one, I was looking at your health insurance type as your exposure, and then the outcome was a labor induction. So what I found was, interestingly, that Medicaid recipients did not have significantly higher odds of having a labor induction compared to non-Medicaid recipients. So in order to assess the role that the economic recession had in all of this, I first created a time variable where I had 2006 and 2007 representing the years before the start of the economic recession. And then I had 2009 and 2010 representing the years after the start of the recession. And I stratified my analyses by health insurance types. So I essentially looked at the effect of time on labor induction first for non-Medicaid recipients and then if you are a Medicaid recipient. So what did I find? I found that non-Medicaid recipients had significantly lower odds of having a labor induction in the years following the start of the economic recession compared to beforehand. I interestingly did not find that among the non-Medicaid recipients. And I think I just threw a lot of biostats and numbers at you guys, so I apologize for that. So if we all were to take a step back and ask ourselves, what does any of this mean? I think there are are a couple of things that we can say based on my findings. And I think we have a couple, albeit probably many, follow-up questions to those findings. So first, I think that we can say that the economic recession may have disproportionately impacted women of different health insurance types. And I'm saying this because we did see the decrease among non-Medicaid recipients. However, we did not see that among Medicaid recipients. So that leads me to one of my questions, is why is this relationship so different by insurance type? Um, so we do have one theory where around that time there's a general push to reduce the number of unnecessary interventions in obstetrics in general. So fewer scheduled cesarean deliveries for non-medically indicated reasons. Uh, there were fewer labor inductions being scheduled for elective reasons. So let's say a mom wanted to deliver on a certain day. There is just generally less of that around that time. So what we could be seeing is that among the non-Medicaid recipients, there were fewer unnecessary interventions following the start of the economic recession. But it's interesting to note that we're not seeing that among Medicaid recipients, and we have to kind of ask ourselves why. Was it that Medicaid recipients were, had, they had stricter guidelines before the start of the economic recession of when they could even be induced, so that kind of relationship could explain why we're not seeing a decrease in the Medicaid recipients as well. So, I think going forward, there are some potential research interests for people. Um, I think that it would be really helpful for future in investigations to try and delineate that relationship a little bit further and look for the mechanisms behind the differences in the induction rates between the two populations. Um, and I think that the findings from that could be potential, potentially beneficial when designing public policy to try and target unnecessary interventions. Thank you. <laughs>